Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing green with purple and weighed in at nine stone, three pounds. Coming to us from Birmingham, he brings a professional record of seven wins, eight defeats, with two wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Holt. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing red with gold and white and weighed in at nine stone. Hailing from Southeast London, he is undefeated with seven wins. Six of his seven wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Loco Louis Lynn. Okay, boys, both know the rules. I want you to obey my commands. I tell you to break, break clean, defend yourselves at all times, boys, okay? Good luck to you both. Second round. Louis Lynn in the red shorts. 25-year-old, undefeated in seven fights. Originally from Bermondsey, now living with his mum out in Epsom. And according to his trainer, Martin Bowers, a little bit like Johnny Tapia. Well, if that's the case, he calls himself Loco. If that's the case, he's certainly going to be exciting. And he started really fast here and holds under pressure right from the off. Yep, he's um, started very quickly here as Louis Lynn. Holt being a, a southpaw, he's trying to catch him with that right hand, but he's jumped on his opponent here very, very quickly, so he's just trying to catch Holt off guard a little bit. But, uh, yeah, he's been very impressive, I think, Louis Lynn, throughout his career up to now. Had the seven contest, six by way of knockout. So he started very very well indeed, and here again, he, he you know, John, he's really put his foot on the gas straight away, catching Holt there with a couple of good shots. First time he's faced a southpaw as a professional as well, this Lynn. And this is a, a really bright start. Elite bantamweight champion he was three years ago, been a pro since 2018. And Paul Holt, the 30-year-old from Birmingham, has been very much on the receiving end in this opening round. Hasn't actually boxed since March 2018, Paul Holt, so this is a... A tough sort of re-engagement with the professional ranks. Yeah, again, Lynn looking for that right hand. He's showing his confidence. He's actually switching to Southpaw himself occasionally. So he's well on top in this opening round. Holt's just trying to work with that jab, keep his hands nice and high. He's trying to block the shots, if anything. Holt's just trying to contain Lynn, but Lynn has started very quickly. Super fit, he's a peacock fighter, and he does a, a lot of road work with Daniel Dubois. He loves going out on the road with his German shepherd dog, Frank. <laughs> it's good to, well, it's good to train with, with, with people, especially when you're running. John, it can be very lonely, mile after mile, so if you're with someone, then that's great. And, you know, they've both got goals in front of them. Well, it's been a really bright opening round, this, from Lynn. He's put a lot into it. And Holt, while he was not rocked, but he was certainly made to look a bit uncomfortable, there's a good right hand from Lynn. Yeah, Holt just made a mistake there. of just throwing that left hand and, and missing the target. And that left him open and Lynn come back with a couple of good counters. But look, now again, it's literally ignited him here. Into, into more action. Good. He started the round very well and he's finishing it very strongly as well. Well, that's a good three minutes from Louis Lynn and he wins that opening round emphatically. Second round, round two. A good opening round from Louis Lynn, who's a bright boy. He did toy with the idea of going to law school at one time, but here he is as a professional fighter. Matthew Macklin was one of those, wasn't he? He started on law, a law education. Yeah, very, very good indeed. Matthew Macklin was a great fighter. He was a very, very clever lad as well, as Matthew. 
for Lily Lynn. He really is showing us here that um, well schooled, keeps switching from the orthodox to side four. I thought Holt did well to get through that opening round. He had a little chat with his cornerman, but here he's under fire again, John. Well, the noise that Lynn produces when he throws his punches reverberating around this hall. This will have his 25th birthday on Monday this week, and here he goes again, piling on the pressure on Holt. Shows a tremendous volume, Rich. Yeah, he's got a good engine, hasn't he? He's very fit. He's going for the stoppage. Holt, just for a split second there in that corner. Didn't look too good for Holt, but Holt has got back to the centre of the ring and needs to stay. Look, this is the, this is a bad place for Holt to be on the ropes in the corners. Doesn't want to be there. Switching attack from body to head, Lynn. Oh, just soaking it up and not delivering too much back. Good switch of attack there again. From Lin, he's really going for it. Needs to find a little bit more space. That's That's a good shots. right hand from Lin. Big shots are going in, John, aren't they? Yeah, Mark, Ly Mark Lyson, the referee, keeping a close watch on things. He wants to be seeing Holt firing back. Doesn't want it to be all one-way traffic. <laughs> Louis Lynn's Peacock teammate, DP Carr, beat Holt on points on his way to a Southern Area title. I'm sure Lynn would like to go one better. Bragging rights at the Peacock. Well, he's going for the stoppage here, is Lynn. But Holt, he's doing well to get through now, and he's, he's gained a little bit of confidence himself. He's blocked a lot in this round. Lynn's put an awful lot into it. He's won the round very comfortably again. But Holt gets through. Yep, two big clear rounds for Louis Lynn. Show as though it Round might go the distance, three. whether he's going to be able to maintain the sort of pace he's set so far in these first two rounds. It's in these positions here when he's got Holt on the ropes where he needs to take uh, John just half a step back just to create a little bit of space. Occasionally, Lynn on the front foot, occasionally he just falls into Holt and that's just um, stifling his work a little bit. He's doing well on that front foot, he's keeping Holt under a lot of pressure, but when he gets him to those ropes, that's when he's just got to find the space and the gaps and that means him taking half a step back just to create that gap. Six of his seven wins have come inside the distance, Lynn. And Paul Holt, who's, who's been uh, inactive of late, has a reputation for being game and tough, even though he's lost eight and only won seven. He is gaining a little bit of confidence now, Holt. Gets caught there with a terrific right hand. Now, that was a good shot from Lynn. But this round, we've just seen Holt just blocking a lot of these shots and then coming back. That's a little bit better to see, just finding the space there to punch his Lynn. Just falling in on Holt there. That looked low. Really going to work on the body now, yeah. Richie. Well, very often when you get really tough kids, they, they tend to take the, the head shots no problem, but it's the body shots that can undo football undo tough boxers. 
Yeah, fair play to Holt. He's taken all this. How long will the referee allow it to go on? He's actually thrown a few back in this third round. He's had a bit more success. That's a nice right hand. He's had a bit more success in this round than he has in the first two. Former Midlands area champion Paul Holt. Well, that was a couple of good shots from Holt there. Lynn maybe just got a little bit complacent how he backed him up onto the ropes, left himself open, and Holt comes back with a couple of good body shots. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's a tough kid, is Holt. And like you say, John, he's just gained a little bit of confidence in this round, and he's starting to fire back. Decent right hand there from Holt. It's not quite the snap in Lynn's work that there was in the first two rounds, but he's finishing the round strongly again. And surely doing enough to make that three out of three. Promoter. Yeah, Wensby lad. <laughs> well, I wondered whether he was going to be able to maintain that phenomenal pace of the first two rounds and Louis Lynn is just boxing a wee bit more conservatively now, perhaps not surprisingly. Yeah, he put so much into those first three. I think he really went for the for the stoppage early on. He just started this round and he's just starting to throw more shots, but that's good movement from Louis Lynn there, boxing as a southpaw. Yeah, he started the round a little bit slower. Regularly spars the Peacock South for Chris Burke in the gym, Louis. Well, you should imagine they're, they're good sparks. They would be very. Yeah. Chris Burke himself is a very good South talk. Right hand from Holt, rocked his head back. Holt's just having occasional success with counters, but not doing enough to threatened to take a round. No, he's not doing enough to, to win the rounds, Holt, although he's throwing more shots now. He certainly took a lot, hasn't he, in the opening three rounds, but he's picking his opportunities and moments now to come back with the odd shot here and there. Oh, that was a little bit low, wasn't it? I think, right on the belt. Oh, not the first, and he's uh, felt, I think he's felt that one. A little word from referee Mark Lyson to Louis Lynn. Nearing the midway point of the fight. Second out, round five. So Richie's got Louis Lynn in the red shorts, having won four rounds out of four so far. But Paul Holt, withstanding an early barrage, and has come back a little bit more in rounds three and four, and certainly making Lynn think a little. But he's 
Seemingly put his foot on the accelerator again here now. Yeah, he started the last round quite slowly, didn't he? But um, gradually worked harder as the round went on, finished the round quite strongly. But this round now he's, yeah, foot on the gas again. Really is going for it. And again, Holt is just prepared to take these shots, try and take as many as he can on the arms and the elbows. But he is a tough kid, Holt. Had a good win last time out, Lynn, beat Monty Ogilvy in July, which was something of a breakthrough fight. Well, there's a terrific right hand there from Lynn, but again, typical um, of him in this contest, actually, where he lands a good shot, and then on the ropes, he's just... He's just stifling his work a little bit by falling in on his opponent. says by his own admission, Lynn, that he likes to fight angry. Well, with a tough guy like Paul Holt in front of you, I'm sure anger is necessary, necessarily the best idea. You've got to watch it when you're, in, when you're boxing angry, if anything, because you, you, you tend to tense up a little bit. But um, he's staying fairly relaxed, but like I said, I've known boxers in the past that when they're boxing angry, then... You can tend to tighten up here and there, and you can telegraph your shots. Holt just marking up a little. There's a bit of scarring underneath his left eye. He just delivered a lovely left hand there, did Holt. Again, Louis Lynn just, just made the mistake of just falling in, and he gets caught with the shot. But again, it's Lynn that's... You know, he's the one that's forcing the pace, John. Of punches, but Holt not being really dented by them. And still throwing one or two little combinations of his own in the closing stages of that fifth round. Is he quitting any time soon, does he? No, certainly not. There'll be no quitting. Round Four six. I saw him fight Leon Woodstock back in 2017, Paul Holt, and Leon stopped him in three. Leicester fighter. Yeah, he boxed well that, that night, did Leon Woodstock. He was on fire around that time as well. What do you think if you're looking at Louis and, you know, I mean, he's obviously got bags of potential, but if you're looking and saying, well, here's a faults that could be rectified, what do you what do you see when you study him? Well, I think he's a, he's a boxer that's he's got a terrific engine, he's got a bit of talent as well, he keeps switching, so you've definitely got the tools there. This type of contest is a good learning fight for him because physically he's, he's better than his opponents, but then it becomes a mental battle and then you've got to look at him and, and, and think, well, you know, is he going to be able to handle 10 and 12 rounds? Because this is a good learning fight for him to, to get through it, try different things. But, yeah, I mean, there's lots to work with here. I mean, look at this. This is good stuff. And he seems to have a terrific engine. He's just got to just find a little gap there a little bit more. Look, the referee's having a look now. So if he just keeps this going, you never... No, see, a little bit of inexperience there. Just lost that, re that real positive position in that corner. He allowed Holt off the ropes. And Holt gets away. Holt surviving. And while all the eye-catching attacks are coming from Lynn, Holt not really been hugely hurt by anything so far. Good learning fight, I guess, for Lynn. First time he'll have gone eight rounds if it goes that distance. It's a good body shot, lovely, lovely left hook. 
Yeah, Holt's got to get off those ropes, John. He really has. Nice left hand from Holt there, both catching each other at the same time. Shut out so far, and this round the pattern remaining the same. And Holt now pretty much concentrating just on survival, and that makes it six out of six. Second key focus. That's all he can round do. Round seven. There's two rounds to go now. To the on the inside there from Louis Lynn in that attack. Just loses his foot in there. But still delivers a nice shot. Solid right hand that time from Holt. Certainly earned his money tonight, young Paul Holt. His dad was a fighter as well, Paul. Goes in the goes in the blood, Mark. He was a Midlands area champion. Featherweight as well. Yes, it does run in the family. Um, the Holt's from Birmingham. I remember watching his dad actually. Um, I think they're from the Nietzsche's area, the Nietzsche's amateur boxing club that they actually fought for. So there they are, a fighting family indeed. See the refs had oh, enough. He's had it. enough, I think. He think he's said enough's enough. It was all one-way traffic, nothing much coming back. And Mark Lyson saying that'll do. So Louis Lynn gets that stoppage when he wanted. He had to work hard for it though, he really did. I don't know what a punch, I don't know what the punch count would have shown, but it would have been fairly epic, I think. I think he's done well there. He's had a real good test. He's got the stoppage in the end. He had to, yes, he did have to work for it. He's in against a tough, stubborn opponent. And just keeps the attacks going here. The ref's having a good look. He works, switches the attack. There's nothing coming back from Holt. And the referee had seen enough. Have a look at it again here. Works to the body, switches to the head. Nothing's coming back from Holt. The referee is having a look, and uh, he says that's enough's enough. So a seventh round win, and eight victories out of eight. As the referee just completes his card, which will be handed in due course to Dr. Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. One minute, 53 seconds of round number seven. Our referee, Mark Lyson, stops the contest as the red corner was in no position to continue. Therefore, your winner and still undefeated, Loco Louis Lynn. Seventh round stoppage over Paul Holt. Happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm pleased with it, yeah. Just... Uh, very tough kid. He was very tough, and um, and it's learning. I know that I, uh, I made a few mistakes by rushing and smothering my work, and maybe changing the angles more, taking a step back. But it's something I'll learn from it, and um, at least I've got a few rounds under my belt anyway. It felt like to me, and I mentioned it to Martin as well. Yeah, you needed that. You needed a fight. Yeah. You needed yeah. someone to be pushing you back a little bit, yeah. a bit of resistance. Do you agree? I think so. Yeah, and and, and like I say, I, I like I like to to fight and that, but and um, yeah, the great training camp thanks to all my coaches at the Peacock. I had some great 
great sparring in the gym with uh, Chris Bork, Danny Carr, uh, Lee McGregor, um, loads, loads of good fighters. And um, and yeah, and le leading up to the fight, I was I was a little bit um, ill. I had to take a bit of time out of the ring and then come back at a week in the gym and just fight weekend and we're here. But yeah, feel good. What was the key to winning tonight? How did you do it? Um, thanks to God, you know what I mean? He, he, he guided me, gave me the strength and that. And uh, I, was, I had to call him because I'm thinking that I'm trying to get, I'm giving him everything and he's still here. Like, what, what have I got to do next? But uh, yeah, thankfully, uh, we got the job done. It was a stoppage in the seventh round. But yeah. The referee sort of jumped in and said, look, I've seen enough here. Yeah. Do, do you agree? Was it was the timing of it right? Uh, I, I believe so, yeah. Obviously, it's nice to to convincingly stop him, but I feel like he was he was taking a lot of big shots and he wasn't coming back all the time, was he, with, with much? So I think he made the right decision and done me a favour. <laughs> but I'm fit enough anyway, but still, still done me a favour. There was a moment, uh, it might have been in the same round as well, where mm. the referee hadn't split you apart, but you'd sort of came apart and you were just looking at him, you were looking at the referee and you didn't jump in and Ray Ball's back here and he's yeah. saying, jump on him, jump on him, Louis. Yeah, I don't Whereas know. if it was in the last fight, you'd have, yeah. you'd have been all over him. Is that a learning from your last yeah, fight? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I don't know why I'd done that. Like, you know, I never you would usually do that, but um, I'd have to watch it back to see what I'd done. I don't know, yeah, maybe I was thinking that like, you're going to stop it, but you got you got a force to stop it, didn't you? Yeah. So and that's, that's what Martin was saying, just, um, just keep, keep on him now and just get him out of there, basically. You fight at this relentless pace, like mm. that first round in particular, it's like you had a train to catch. Yeah, it, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was something like yeah. that. You, you could go all night, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. And uh, yeah, just train, train really hard. Thanks to God, I've got a great team around me and I'm blessed to be here on such a great card, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm buzzing, this is what I train for. And yeah, I'm just over the moon. And obviously, thanks to all my sponsors here, yeah, MR Scaffolding, Carey's, Heroes Heretics, um, Phoenix Limited and Designer Africa's. All that's missing, you've got all those sponsors, mm -hmm. yeah. lovely, you know, the, the Christ yeah, is thanks there. thanks to Jesus, you know what I mean? I did say that, but listen, thanks to Jesus, I can do all things through Christ. And God will now keep learning, getting better. And, um, and I want to fight some champions now and, and just step, step it up. And uh, hopefully we can get them fights in the new year and start getting some titles. That's what I'm thinking, all that's missing is a belt. You want that gold, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, I want it, I want it, all the belts. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll get them. What sort of statement do you think you sent out to the uh, any featherweights watching tonight? That I'm coming for them and I'm coming for them all. And be ready, because, yeah, it's on you. <laughs> as, as Ray Ball said to me, it's on you, Sonia. <laughs> it's on you, so, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. Louis, congratulations, yeah, thanks mate. Thanks a lot, Dev. Cheers. Thanks all.